Let's move on to our performance of the week. It's brought to you by Healthspan Elite. Healthspan Elite is the first sports nutrition partner of the All Blacks. For the last five years, the team has been supplementing their diet with Healthspan Elite products to support their health and aid performance. The range is specifically developed to provide trusted, batch-tested supplements, giving peace of mind that they are safe to take. Guys, start with you, Bryn. Who's your performance of the week or what is your performance of the week? Performance of the in, in the game or do you want to talk about Harbour for the next 10, 10 15 minutes? <laughs> 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 nah, look, um, I was actually really, um, I'm a, oh, the performance of the week was the Australians. You know, we talked a lot of hype around how they were going to play, how, what were they going to be like. Um, and look, there was some individual performance. I, you know, I thought Dinguna, we talk, we've talked about him as well. But for me personally, as, as a halfback, the performance of Nick White um, was, was second to none in, in tough conditions. And um, he showed a lot, of, a lot of versatility in his game when it came to running, um, his passing, and then his kicking game as well, as Jip has alluded to as well with his execution of that. So, um, yeah, Nick White was bloody impressive for me, mate. So he's my moment of the week. Uh, for me, I actually found this hard to pick. I've been thinking about it. And I was thinking, man, there's so many to pick from. But I suppose for the week, um, Dave Rennie. Mm. I, I think he, he, he's, he's had to travel. He hasn't been in the environment. And he's put a, a, a game plan and personnel in place and giving guys opportunities and, and you know, I would say first job is test. He, he would he'd, you know, be pretty happy. So I think Dave Rennie uh, for the performance of the week for me. It's solid. You can't go against that, can you? No, I just think, man, it's, it's probably underestimated how, mm. you know, like you're always going to see a spike. I know people say it, you always see a spike when there's a change of coach and, He's straight away already thinking about, no, no, we've got it. You know, 80 minutes won't make yeah. it. You know, it's all those sorts of things that I'm like, he's, that's why for me, he got performance of the week. It's just, he's just, I like the cut of his gym yeah. and I like the, I like the adjustments he's making. And, Mate, you know, I th- yeah, Trevor, I think that, that you've talked about it, that messaging, his messaging mm. to the group. You know, I think we've seen a little bit in the past with, with my, with, with the checker, yeah. obviously very emotional when this, the Richter scale goes up and down. So you know, it's good for good for your media, Ross. Us in the media, mate. Obviously, <laughs> good <to> storylines. <laughs> yeah. But, um, look, I think when you've got a coach that's just has that, um, just very level like calmness, and you know, you talk around a, a great performance. If you're thinking about it, a, a bloody good performance against a a good New Zealand team, and he's already talking around. Yeah, we were good, but again, we need to back it up. You know, last time we did this, we lost by thirty points. So. I guess having that accountability in that group, giving that mindset into the group and changing some certain things around behavioural attitudes, um, look, it's just going to grow for them. And look, what a great test match. It's going to be uh, at a sold-out Eden Park. So, oh, we're, we're, we're excited for the first one, Jip, but the second oh, one's going to be even mate. better, mate. I'm, I'm really excited. I just want to quickly touch on that point because I think it's a key point around mm. Rennie's prep going into this game. The yeah. fact that in the post-match press conference, He's like, no, nah, we, we won in Perth and then 36 nil a week later in Elbert. So that's how far, you know, he's gone back probably two years of footage and watched over and, and, and come in with an idea of where he can change, knowing the personnel. That's the in-depth work that, you know, you probably don't see from a coach like, like him, you know, like well, the people wouldn't know what, you know, to know those facts and the, and the mm. statistics and to talk about it, you know, he's done his, his homework to make sure, you know, that's... I don't know. That, if I was an Aussie Wallaby fan, I'd just be frothing. I'd be so excited. Yep. He had a good, for me, a good feel for what Aussie rugby's strengths are. Like we talked earlier about the amount of time and phase play that they were able to build and build and build and build. When I think about the great Aussie teams that I've watched over the years, they've been incredible at quick ball and multiple phases. And in the late 90s, outrageous amount of phases. Yeah. And, and if you can take the combative um, Dave Reddy style and combine it with that Aussie natural instinct, and he seems to have done that fairly well first up. Well, I think that's his thing is he's not, he doesn't want to be, uh, I suppose, a Kiwi coach that tries to turn the Wallabies into the, a Kiwi rugby team because that's not their way of playing the game. So I think he's smart enough to know that he's, he's, he's got a coach the little detail around the style that's going to fit the personnel. And that's what I think makes him a great coach is he always coached to the, the cattle he's got rather than yeah, trying nice. to coach to a coach to a way that he thinks was right. Yep. So that's, that's why it makes it so good. He's so flexible in, mm. in his, in his methods, but he keeps things simple yeah. as well. I think, don't I, I think we can't underestimate his time. They went over to the Northern hemisphere as well. Mm. 
you know, so yep, he had the uh, the, the New Zealand attacking brand that he's that he's coached from Manawatu to to the Chiefs. And That's then, true. Um, and then now he's he been overseas, and you know, Northern Hemisphere rugby is a little bit more set piece orientated, and you know, kicking off nine and ten a little bit more around um, percentage plays. And I don't think like, we can't underestimate that time that he spent over there. He could to take a few little gold nuggets that he'd take from there and then implementing it in um, into games very specifically. If you think about the game on the weekend, wet, windy, very similar to Northern Hemisphere and conditions so you know having that kind of understanding of like oh, they've been in very similar positions with a different cattle and then we talk around with what you said Chip being able to understand that what the cattle that you have and I'm not just not trying to play one certain style that I have at the Chiefs it might be different uh, that it was when he was at Glasgow and now different in the Wallabies so yeah I completely agree on that Chip understanding his cattle that he has and then being able to uh, put a game plan that works to his strengths of his team that he's coaching. Hmm. And the, I mean, we touched on it earlier as well, the level-headed approach that he has. When I think of a lot of the top coaches in recent years, you know, whether it be Hanson or Checker or Eddie Jones, these guys who are almost front and centre, like they're almost bigger than their team in some ways. Dave Rennie's not that guy. He manages to be the go-to guy without being the guy who attracts headlines, without all of those things. And that must be great for a young group of players to kind of maybe have a better feel for what is required from them. You don't, you don't necessarily, when you're rebuilding, want to see some guy who's out there showboating in the press conferences and being the superstar of the side, right? Yeah, absolutely. It, look, he doesn't um, overpromise and underdeliver either. You know, like he just he keeps his cards close to his chest and what he wants to achieve. But like we were saying earlier, when he gets asked a question, he answers it and he moves on. But he answers it in two or three words. He doesn't try to. Yeah, he doesn't try to be. The, the headline he just he just goes about his work he's like a grafter you know like a grafting rugby player you know they they, they just constantly work and probably don't get the reward but they're, they're the guy that hits you know 40 rucks 50 rucks a game and, and makes 15 tackles and you know sort of like a Matt Phillip who I thought was a surprise package yesterday the amount of carries he had and you know you would have thought it would be go to more to the, the Samos and the Awesome. Um, yeah, and and Tupo and that, but he he he. I thought he was a surprise package in the amount he carried and the effectiveness of how he carried. But that's the style of player that Dave Rennie likes because that's it's just that grafter and that's what he's like as well. He just wants to sit in the background. He does his work, and then he lets he lets his work do the talking. Yeah, well, if you think of it in the time of the Chiefs, Chip, those kind of um, players. Oh, what was his name? Is the captain Clark? Clark. Yeah, Craig Clark. Yeah, Craig Clark. You know, players like that. You know, if we're talking around grafting and guys that don't get the comp, that don't get the rewards or the the headliners for doing, you know, scoring tries or having extract or anything like that. Guys that know what you're going to get, consistent understanding of what the the team needs from you. And so mm-hmm. I think you know, Dave Rennie always has a great he always has a great feel and selects those players pretty well. You know, and I think if you think of a we look we talk about checker, a guy that's really good on the other on the opposite is Eddie Jones. Mm. Now, Eddie Jones has got a really good um, ability and I think the positive thing you can if you have a coach like that, it takes all the heat off the team. So if you've had a bad performance in the game, if you've got a coach that wants to take the heat, then I think you know Eddie Jones on the other side is probably a guy that um, pushes the boundaries where it's, it's good, but then obviously you can have its bad bad things around it. But um, yeah, I think having a, a demeanor coach like like um, like Dave, you know, makes it just easier for for the boys as well. Are we just are we being because we're talking him up so much? Are we just being smart, um, you know, setting him up for a fall here? Because <laughs> I think if he was listening to this, he'd be he'd just be like, oh my god, they're setting me up for failure. Um, but um, it just it, he, I've, I've probably gone on, on about it too much. But he, he, it's exciting for where he can take the wallabies. I think. 